We can identify the properties of images generated by spherical mirrors by utilizing the mirror equation and the magnification equation. We can determine the image distance, the image height, whether it is upright or inverted, whether it's virtual or real, etc. But the math on that equation, it's not, they're not particularly hard, but it's very, very easy to make a mistake, particularly with the signs of positive and negative, switching up as often as they do. So there's another way we can go about trying to identify all these properties of an image, and if we use them both in tandem, it's going to help us prevent ourselves from making those mistakes. And that's for using something known as a ray diagram. A ray diagram is essentially a way we're going to draw a bunch of different rays coming off a point on an object. We're going to see where they coalesce, and that's going to tell us where that point is going to be on the image. So what I have right here is I have a concave mirror, so that's a mirror of the shiny side Bowden. I've got my optical axis, I've got my center of curvature, half of that distance here is the focal length F, and then additionally I've got what is known as the plane of the mirror. This is really just the perpendicular aspect, so it's really the tangent line to this point right here. That's going to be useful, we'll see in just a second. So let me go ahead and turn off those labels so it's a little easier to read. And let's go ahead and draw our object here, and typically speaking, just to make things simple, we draw our object as an arrow, that way we can know if it's upright or inverted. Um, we basically put the base of the arrow on the optical axis, we point it away from that axis. Now for any ray diagram, we're going to identify three special rays. So the first of these rays is essentially what the definition of focus comes from. We're going to have a light ray go from the top of this object parallel to the optical axis. So it's going to go parallel towards the mirror, and then it is reflected through the focus. So that is ray number one. Ray number two, well, if we think about it, if we had a light ray going here that was parallel, it would be reflected from the focus to the top of this object. So the same will be true in reverse. So if I go through the focus, it will be reflected parallel. And already we can see where these two rays meet. So this is actually enough to tell us that the image is going to be located right there. But you know, let's say we want to double check, we want to make sure that we haven't made a mistake, so I'm going to erase that for a second, and let's identify our third ray. So our third ray, we can utilize the law of reflection, and the law of reflection says that if I have this coming in here, and it goes to this point right here at some angle theta, across the optical axis where it reflects will be another angle theta, so this is the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection, and it will come out and we see it does intersect at this point here. Now there's one issue with this particular ray, and that is that I can draw things parallel and through the focus pretty easily just by using, you know, a ruler. But to be able to identify angles and make sure they are measured properly, I have to utilize a protractor. And let's say you don't have one of those immediately handy. So instead, I'm going to actually identify a different ray to substitute in for this third one so I don't have to use a protractor. And that is if I have a ray going from this object directly through the center. Well, if it's going through the center, it's going to lie along the diameter of this sphere. So it's going to continue on, it's going to hit the mirror here, and this will actually happen at a perpendicular angle. And if it happens at this perpendicular angle, it's going to be reflected straight backward. So it's really just a single line going through the center and reflecting back through the center. But we see that all three of these meet at this point right here. And in fact, that is where my image will be. It's where these three uh, different rays meet, that would be the top of the image, and then it's just going to go right back down to the optical axis. So let's look at a couple of different examples. So let's say I've got, once again, a concave mirror, and I'm going to draw my object instead at this point, so it's between the focal length and the uh, center of curvature. All right, so what was the first special ray? The first special ray was, okay, it's going to go parallel, and then through the focus. Now what you'll notice here is I actually don't have it reflect from the edge of the mirror. I have it reflect back from this plane of the mirror. That's going to make my rays come out to be slightly more accurate. So it's going to go parallel through the focus. All right, now I'm going to do my second one. And the second one was through the focus and then parallel to the axis. So I do that here. It goes through the focus, parallel to the axis. We should expect the image to be right here, but let's do the third ray just to check. The third one is going to go from the center so it's going this way from the center, going to reflect and come straight back from the center. All three of these meet here. And you'll notice that all three rays physically meet. So this is in fact a real image. All three rays converge. Additionally, it would be inverted and it appears to be what? Enlarged because that is bigger than the original object was.
And once again, let's look at a slightly different situation. I've now put the object between the mirror, the concave mirror, and the focus. I'm going to go ahead and draw my three special rays. First ray goes through the focus, or goes parallel, and then through the focus. Okay? Second one is going to go through the focus and then parallel. Now notice, this doesn't actually extend back here. It's leaving here, but I can basically wind up my ruler or whatever so that as it's going from the focus, the focus is not actually connected here, but this light ray is going from the direction of the focus and then going parallel. And lastly, I would have one going from the center straight backwards. But you'll notice something, though, that the rays don't converge anywhere except at the object itself. So, well, where's my image? And notice that that is because they are diverging rather than converging. The rays are spreading out rather than linking up because we are within the focal length of this concave mirror. So this is a converging mirror, but in this particular portion, the rays are diverging. So what I have to do here is if the rays diverge, we need to extend the reflected rays back into this virtual space behind the mirror. And what's really crucial here it is the reflected part of the rays that we extend backwards. So looking at this first one, it was going parallel, and then it reflects through the focus. So I'm going to take the line that went through that focus, and I'm going to extend that backward. Now notice I've made these dashed here, so I could tell, okay, this is behind the mirror. The next one went, let's see, from the focus and then parallel. So I take the reflected parallel one, go backwards. And then lastly, we go through the center. Now, luckily for this one, it's a straight line, so that goes backwards. And we'll notice that they all meet up right there at that location behind the mirror. And this would be where our virtual image is. And this is a virtual image because the rays are not physically converging at this point. It's really just an optical illusion. If we were standing over here somewhere and we were seeing these diverging rays, we would look back at the mirror and our brain would piece together that the object should be back over here somewhere, even though that's really not the case. It's just where the virtual image is. So it is virtual, it is upright, because it's facing the same direction as the object, and it once again is enlarged. Now lastly, let's look at a convex mirror rather than a concave mirror. And a convex mirror, otherwise known as a diverging mirror, has its focus behind the mirror. So this is the shiny side, is this side over here. And this is actually a little easier to analyze because I know that all images from a diverging mirror are going to be virtual and therefore all the light rays are always diverging. And so I can automatically know I'm going to have to extend the rays behind the mirror. So let's go one at a time. The first ray goes parallel. And remember, then it goes through the focus. But the thing is, though, is that through the focus, that's going to be the reflected part. So I'm going to extend that reflected ray backward to the focus. And then the real ray would actually be extending outward in this direction. The second one would be going through the focus. So it's going towards the focus. But remember, this is not the part that extends backwards. It's the reflection that extends backwards. So I'm then going to draw its reflection going parallel. So that's going to go backward from that point. And then lastly, I have the one going through the center to the center, and luckily for us, that is just a straight line. But we get that right here is where the top of the image is going to be, and that is once again going to be a virtual image, upright, and in this particular instance, it is reduced. So all images from convex mirrors will be generated in this way, with a little bit of fluctuation. Okay, so that should conclude how exactly we draw ray diagrams for spherical mirrors.